Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna talk about Midnight Commander. Midnight Commander is a uh, little utility that some of you guys may already be uh, aware of. Um, it's one of these sort of suite of a whole bunch of different utilities um, that are you know, basically file browsers uh, on the command line instead of using this through a GUI. So it's sort of a, a hybrid little solution. Um, and there's a, there's a number of these. Uh, I see a lot of people using uh, Ranger, uh, which is you know a perfectly good little um, text-based uh, browser. I think it's a, a little bit um, simpler, a little bit more straightforward than the Midnight Commander in terms of uh, its interface. Uh, but Midnight Commander or MC is uh, the other big one, and then the the last is VI FM. Um, or the VI file manager. Um, personally, I don't use VI FM at all. Occasionally I'll use uh, Ranger, uh, but if I'm gonna be using one of these utilities, uh, I will probably be using Midnight Commander. And um, I think what happens is a lot of people sort of pull up Midnight Commander and its default configuration doesn't look necessarily the most pretty, you know, um, kind of customized. Um, the color scheme that they use isn't maybe the best. So a lot of people sort of don't use it. Uh, but it's been around for a really long time. It derived from uh, Norton Commander, uh, which again was another uh, sort of little utility you could go ahead and use to, to browse the, the file system. So one of the virtues of this being around for a, a long time is if I pull up uh, a, a SUSE instance, and this is probably gonna be a little bit too small for you guys to see because it's just on a on a VM. Uh, let me try this. Well, that's still about the same size. So um, basically, well, I'm just gonna write run MC. Uh, MC is the command that you go use on uh, on Linux to go ahead and uh, use Midnight Commander. And the, uh, the point of this, is that on SUSE at least, uh, and this is uh, OpenSUSE, uh, OpenSUSE Leap 15, uh, MC is part of the default package installation. So it's, it's there already. Now, if I go jump over to uh, another VM, if I go pull up uh, an Ubuntu VM, and, and, and in fairness, this is an older one. This is a, a Ubuntu 14.04, which I got for some legacy stuff that I'm gonna uh, be, be playing around with uh, for a separate kind of thing. Uh, both of these are pretty much brand new installs. If I do an MC, you can see that it's not installed by default. Uh, so it's it's going to be on, on a number of different distributions, but it may not be on, on all of them. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go jump over to yet another VM, uh, and this one's going to be under FreeBSD. So um, as you guys can go ahead and see, a little bit larger of a font size. So hopefully this will make this uh, a bit easier for us to go play around with it. So <clears throat> there's a couple different things that uh, are, are worth sort of pointing out. So if I do MC just by itself, uh, you can see here that this looks uh, quite a bit nicer, um, at least you know my take on it. It's got you know a, a much better color scheme, I think. Um, it's you know easy to go look at, and if you see the the default layout is to have sort of two locations, so it's got sort of a source and a destination. Uh, directory structure. So you got one directory on the left, one directory on the on the right. Here, this is changed to a preview. Uh, so if I go down to, let's say, my X resources file, uh, and I select that, you can see that this is now, um, you know, something I can go ahead and look at, and I can go, um, you know, potentially play around with this and, and stuff like that. So, you know, it gives you some of the functionalities of, of previewing. Um, you also have sort of the, the sort of hint down here below. And I see a lot of the tutorials that I, because I, I did a, a quick search for this uh, before I started putting the video together. Um, a lot of people will say like, oh, you can you can disable this. Um, and it's like, yeah, you could, but if you're new to Midnight Commander, it's kind of nice to have the hints. So I would leave them on. Um, we've got a, a number of sort of things you can go use. Uh, if you notice here, uh, I can go to um, help we have the internal file reviewer. It's saying, you know, this is the best method, but you can go look at this. And it, it basically gives you options to go look at things. How did I get to that? Uh, I clicked on help. And then I clicked on index. And now I can go click on previous. 
So I can go to those different sections, right? And then I can go quit out of that. Uh, I could also go ahead and use my F keys, my function keys to go do this. So if I did F1, uh, and sometimes these will be taken over by your um, by your terminal. So in this case, I'm using Mate terminal. So it, it may be using those. Um, so I could try to go do Alt uh, 1. Eh, that didn't like it. No, okay. So sometimes it'll like those, sometimes it won't. Um, on on GUIs, a lot of times you'll see that the browser is being used. If I were doing this in a different terminal, I think the the F commands uh, would probably work. And, and in fact, let's let's test that. Go ahead and launch a new terminal. This is just using Xterm. I can go ahead and make this a little bigger. Right click on here. And let's go ahead and change the uh, terminal size. Where is my... Huh. There we go. So now, if I go ahead and maximize this, and I do MC, um, if we do... F1, there we go, the help comes up. So it depends on your uh, your terminal, right? So uh, in this case, you know, with uh, with Xterm, it works perfectly fine. In a Mate terminal, uh, it takes over the, the F key, so we don't go ahead and see that. So um, I'm going to go back to Mate terminal just because I think the font size is a little bit bigger uh, and easier to go ahead and use. So we've got these different menus up here. Right? We can go ahead and see. We can go ahead and see that it's got, like, you know, tree view, uh, we can go ahead and look at, you know, info. We can go ahead and connect to remote sites um, via SFTP, um, FTP, you know, things like that. So these are these are some neat little features that you have kind of built into this. Uh, we can look at, you know, various different formats of things. We can go look at various different properties. So we can go look at uh, permissions, for example. So if we want to go ahead and show a, a file, uh, we can go to like the shown, and that's going to go ask us what, you know, permissions we want to go give that file. So for folks who are a little bit newer to this, this might be really useful because some of these things are, are a little bit difficult to, to remember uh, initially. Um, so we have virtual file systems. You can go into tar files, for example. Um, and let me see if I have uh, any ls star dot zip. No, ls star dot tgz. No, I'm not seeing those. So if we go ahead and scroll down, I thought we had some some files here, but it doesn't look like it. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do tar uh, cv czvf. Uh, I'm going to create a zipped file system, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and have that be uh, the blah, 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 let's say the net of calc. Why is that being weird? <laughs> I'm freaking it out for some reason. Let's quit out of this. I'll go ahead and create a tar file real quick. That's why. All right. I should mention I'm a little bit sick, by the way. Um, so my brain isn't completely working. So now if I go to uh, ba -ba, find my nc.tgz, I can go into that and I can go into the directory and I can go ahead and see all the kind of stuff that's in here. So, you know, it's just sort of a neat thing that, that has, you know, capabilities like that. All right. So, interesting idea. Um, it's a cool little utility. If I go to uh, some of these things, you can see here it doesn't have built-in image previews. 
you can go ahead and change the way this works. And if you wanted to really tweak it, you could. Uh, but if we just click uh, return, it'll open that up in whatever the default uh, kind of viewer is uh, for that type of file. So uh, I'm not sure why that didn't load it. It's taking its sweet time here for some reason. <laughs> uh, but this is just a picture of my dog. Um, so for whatever reason, that seems to be taking a while, but, uh, but that's the, that's, that's basically midnight commander. It's a neat little utility. Um, it's, a you know, uh, a fun little tool that you guys can go ahead and use, uh, not necessarily something that you have to necessarily go use. Um, but it's a, it's a quick little, uh, kind of tool you can go use to go play around with things. Um, we can go ahead and change the various different options for this, which is probably a good thing to go look at. So for example, we could go ahead and look at the layout um, and go ahead and change the, the split if we want to go ahead and make this bigger or smaller on one side or the other. So maybe for example, we want to go ahead and um, you know not do an equal split. We can go ahead and change this so it's you know a smaller preview but a bigger file system tree. So that's, that's kind of cool, right? Little neat kind of options that we have here. Um, we can go ahead and look at the configuration and you can go ahead and use uh, you know, whether you want to go ahead and have this be, you know, um, two file browsers on each side. Uh, if you want to go use a different color scheme, um, all those kind of things that you can go ahead and do if you want to. So um, play around with it. It's a neat little, uh, neat little tool. So some of the themes are pretty, pretty decent. Not too much of a difference on that, but we can go ahead and look at, you know, kind of default theme versus some of the, you know, some of the other ones. Um, and I'm sure you can go get additional themes for these if you're, if you're interested. So, you know, whatever you want to go use for those, those are pretty decent. And just to kind of compare and contrast this, uh, versus uh, Ranger. Um, so Ranger is installed here. You can see that this is a little bit of a different look and feel, uh, a bit more minimal. Um, so one of the things that, you know, it's kind of interesting is they both allow you to go ahead and do shell commands. So I can go ahead and do PS or something like that. Um, and it would go ahead and run those, uh, but, you know, it's going to be, you know, a, a little bit, I, I feel clunkier with, uh, uh, with Ranger. That's just my personal take on it though. If I go down here to, uh, bits, you can go ahead and see that we can go ahead and select bits and then it gives you a, a preview. In this case, it's using fa, um, and they all work, you know, nicely. So. Uh, if you haven't seen my dog before, that's that's her name, and you can tell that I'm a nerd because I named her bits. Um, but that's that's kind of it. Um, VIFM, right? I don't have that installed. Um, um, another thing that's worth noting is um, a lot of people will alias uh, Midnight Commander to a wrapper script that comes with it. So if you go to CD to user local lib exec, Midnight Commander. Uh, and there's a script in here called the MC wrapper. Um, so a lot of people will do alias MC equals, and then they'll have dollar sign PWD, whatever the path is, MC wrapper. And then I can go ahead and do MC. And it looks like the same thing, but if we go into uh, etcfs.d, and then let me see if there's another directory in there. Um, well, whatever. Uh, if we exit out of here, um, it'll change directories uh, to that. So I think you need to do that when you first start it up. But, um, you know, there's some stuff with that. And then we can go ahead and look at the extensions. There are some uh, some tools here. So you can go ahead and have, uh, you know, text and video. And these are basically the handlers that you can go use. So if I edit the image... Uh, .sh. What this is doing is it's using uh, the xdg open command. So the xdg open command is is basically going to allow you to sort of like a like a like a mime type uh, picker for for x. You can go ahead and change the defaults for this uh, to something else. So if we wanted to go ahead and have this be, um, you know, a, a different method of opening things, we could go ahead and have this be uh, fa instead of uh, you know the xdg open. So. So if you go, you know, man the XCG open, 
uh, it'll go ahead and, and tell you the configuration files and all these kind of things and the XDG settings uh, and so forth. So you can go ahead and change that to other file viewers and, and such if you like to go do it. Um, so I don't really play with uh, with those kind of command line file browsers too much. Uh, I know a lot of people who are into sort of more tiling uh, window window managers uh, like that, but it's it's great when you're sort of poking around and looking for something. Um, I find that can be really nice, and because it's in the uh, in the terminal, um, and uh, especially with some distributions, including Midnight Commander in the, in the, the default package set, um, you can go use this to do server management stuff as well. Um, also, it's nice for sort of interacting with the server if you're going to go connect to it via SFTP or things like that. So those are those are potentially little options. So that's just a, a little tool that you guys might. Uh, be interested in. If you're interested in seeing more uh, kind of, uh, um, you know, uh, videos on, on tools and, and sort of, you know, things like this, uh, you know, check out down below. There's the uh, subscribe button. Uh, so click on that, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and have more videos in the future about uh, IT, you know, tools for things like Linux, uh, as well as uh, discussions about how to, you know, approach an IT career. Uh, and hopefully do well with uh, the sort of building a career for yourself. So thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.